So I'm just going to be direct with you. Jump and Shoot Attack is a really fun auto-scrolling platformer in the spirit of NES games, but falls short due to a lack of ambition. Also, it made me very upset. Very, very upset. <laughs> <laughs> when you start up the game, the plot's explained in like two screens. You play as Luis Lightfoot, who's gotta save the president of Earth 4 from the evil mutants called Xanthar. Uh, alright. Plot aside, the game is pretty straightforward. Tap on the left to jump, tap on the right to shoot. And seeing how you can tap anywhere on the screen, it avoids that touch control problems that are common in these types of games. So if you die, it's still your fault. It seems like an overly simple control scheme at first, but then you realize how much strategy there really is. Similar to Mega Man, Luis will jump higher the longer you hold the screen and drop like a rock when you let go, so you actually have a lot of precision over where she ends up. If you want to stop and think before tackling an obstacle, you can get behind a wall and plan ahead. And most importantly, since you don't have to worry about knockback, a trope very common in old platformers, you only need to focus on timing your jumps just right and not be afraid if you're going to hit an enemy like a centimeter away from your face. Usually I froze up a lot when I was too close to an enemy, mostly because I think I'm as good as dead, so I really had to fight against my instincts. It's like that old saying, tapping your head while rubbing your stomach, or something like that? It's a pretty genius idea in my opinion, but just be prepared to die, and die, repeatedly. You see, the game is advertised as an NES hard game on your phone, and I agree with that to an extent. Instead of the old Mega Man format, three lives with a health bar on each life, you're given ten lives and instead die in one hit. Now usually this would just be absurd, and Mega Man 9 tries to pull that crap on you, mm -hmm. But since levels are less than a minute long, it's difficult without being too frustrating and the system fits the game really well. Except for one thing. When you lose all your lives, you're pushed back to the beginning of the world which is split into four worlds with four levels each. And when you go back in the game, you can replay any level in the world you've beaten or start at the beginning of the world you lost in. Now this itself isn't too bad and it's cool you can catch up to where you were in like two or three minutes while mastering the previous levels or even taking a different path but the problem comes into play when you quit the game, because it doesn't reset your lives. Due to this, you may open the game to attempt the next world, or die a lot on the first level and want to restart, and you'll end up with like 6 or 7 lives. So if you want to start with 10, you'll have to kill Luis repeatedly, and with so many lives, this just gets old fast. Also, if you want to start a new game, you can't revisit old levels unless you beat the game again, which is a pain when collecting jewels, which I'll talk about in a second. If you're trying to blast through the whole game, a separate mode or an extra save file really would have been nice instead of getting friendly with the first spike in the stage. <sighs> anyway, back to the gameplay. The point of each level is to reach the end of the stage while collecting three jewels. See? I told you it'd be a second. And blasting enemies for points. But what I found really interesting is that instead of making difficulty levels for the game, the dev lets the player choose at many points whether you want to upgrade your weapon and make the game easier, or get the jewel and not only risk dying reaching it, but also lose that upgrade which forces you to aim better with your limited firepower. And with these Metroid-like guys that move up and down, it's a pain! Along with these two power-ups, each level has a 1-up somewhere that responds every time you die, so as long as you get it every time, you won't lose any lives. But don't think it's just a handout either, since their placements usually make them a pain to reach, so the risk and reward with stocking lives is another one of the game's great ideas. Now with all that out of the way, I think my main problem with the game is that it plays everything else way too safe. Jump and Shoot Attack takes inspiration from many games. The gameplay is obviously inspired by Mega Man, the music sounds like Journey to Celius and the other games that use that sunsoft bass. Mm. And the visuals and enemy designs take notes from a lesser known NES game called Abadox The Deadly Inner War. For those who don't know, it's a pretty awesome shoot 'em up that's known for being inside an alien's body. It's really gross, but it's like three bucks on Amazon, so I do recommend playing it. Fun fact, some of the music I use from this segment is from Abadox. <laughs> anyway, I'm going on a tangent here. What I'm trying to say is that while inspiration is taken from these games, it doesn't do anything better than its inspirations. The visuals are all really samey, with different worlds usually meaning a different color palette. The music sounds alright, but it sounds so similar to its source material that it had me looking up NES music instead. And the game is really short despite being so hard. In fact, there's an achievement in the game for beating it in under 10 minutes! Despite the genius concept, the presentation still ends up feeling somewhat generic. In conclusion, Jump and Shoot Attack is a decent time waster for $2, but it could have been so much better if it tried to get out of that comfort zone, or if there was more content to try. But I guess at the end of the day, it accomplished what it set out to do, and platformers being one of my favorite genres, I had a blast playing it, and cursing a lot, and having an existential crisis on Twitter! So Jump and Shoot Attack has good gameplay, okay visuals, okay sound, and okay length, but overall is a good game that I recommend to platformer fans who want a good short challenge. And that's as direct as it's gonna get from me. Oh my god. I went through the whole review without an Ego Raptor reference. Woo! That's it. I'm out. It's over. Peace.
No, but seriously, he's a cool guy and I like his work. He just didn't coin the term jump and shoot. It's been around since the 80s. I can see the comment section already. They should make a sequel called Riding on Cars. Well, guess what? That joke's been made already by me. I patented that one. <laughs>